offense in the Big Ten. It's maybe not the first thing that has been brought up, right? I'll be, uh, I'll be willing to admit that. We haven't exactly been the conference of offense, at least recently, at least depth-wise. That's belonged to the Pac-12, but now that the Pac-12 doesn't exist and we've got four Pac-12 teams coming in, are we the conference of offense? Well, still probably not, but the Big Ten has certainly gotten better on the offensive side of the football. Now I'm going to rank them 1-18, to 18, everybody in between. These, this is time for offensive power rankings right now. I am going to start first with the right-siders when it comes to offense. That's the back nine, so to speak, on the offensive side of the football within the Big Ten Conference. Look, until proven otherwise, I'm going to put Iowa at the bottom. Uh, I just am. You know, there's still some uncertainty at quarterback. It's a new system. Like Tim Lester's coming in and things are new schematically. You're still installing things, which would be difficult in and of itself. But when you had the inefficiency that Iowa had last year and really the last handful of years on offense, that's going to take some time. And if they make a quarterback change in the middle of the season, it's not exactly going to help the growth of this offense go forward. Look, they don't have much outside of Caleb Brown at wide receiver. They're leaning on Luke Lachey and this run game right now. It's just, I can't, I can't in good conscience put Iowa above the last spot right now. Northwestern is going to be fun with Zach Luan coming in as the new offensive coordinator, a dual threat type of system outside of their top two wide receivers, Bryce Kurtz and AJ Henning. It drops off of the wide receiver position. Joseph Hyman is an electric running back. So this, I think, could maybe work at Northwestern, but right now they don't have a huge threat throwing the ball down the field of the quarterback position. They really relied on that with Ben Bryant uh, last season. I've got Purdue slightly ahead of Rutgers right now because I think the Boilermakers are just a little bit more balanced on the offensive side of the football. I know they've got some offensive line issues. When you look at Rutgers, they had the slightest of upgrades at quarterback with Aston Kaliak Manis over Gavin Wimsett. Now, you don't get Gavin's QB run mobility, but you get, I think, a little bit of a better passer in Ethan right now. He has been inconsistent at Minnesota, so hopefully he can get better. As of right now, preseason, I think this is a fairly one-dimensional offense. They need to prove it to me with these new wide receivers, like you're leaning on a couple of FCS guys in the scene, Brantley and Dimer Miller coming in to really uh, show this. And when you look at Purdue, like if their offensive line – can hold strong and at least be average. Hudson card can deal. You know, they're lower on this list because they lose almost everybody out of their wide receiver room. Still some unproven guys um, in there as well. Uh, Illinois slotting it at number 14. Look, you bring in Zachary Franklin on the outside. Good. I like Caden Fagan running the football. Good. I like uh, this offensive line. Good. I just, once you get past Franklin and Bryant at wide receiver, I think it drops off a little bit. There's some uncertainty at the depth at that position, losing Cole Ruska tight end to injury, that really hurt as well. But this is going to be a Brett Bielema offense. I think it's going to be physical. I don't think it's going to be ultra explosive. But they're going to hope that Zachary Franklin really comes up and he's that big-time guy to replace um, Isaiah Williams out on the outside. I thought Minnesota and Nebraska were fairly similar. I took the college experience of Max Brosmer. I know it's not FBS, but I took the college experience of Brosmer right now over the inexperience of Dylan Raiola. Dylan Raiola will be a better college quarterback when his career is done than Max Brosmer. But as of right now, uh, I think the Minnesota offensive line is a notch better than Nebraska's is right now. I think they're both going to be really good running the football. I think they both have some questions maybe on the perimeter. I think Nebraska may be a little bit of an edge there. They're close but I just give it to the Minnesota Golden Gophers um, over there as well. Like if Aiden Childs is the truth, Michigan State could certainly rise up this list, but who's going to step up at the wide receiver position? That's another big uh, question I have. Outside of Tanner Miller transferring in from Oregon State on this whole f- offensive line, there's some big questions. If they can't protect Childs, they could have some issues, but I do like the running back tandem and Nate Carter and UMass transfer K. Ron Lynch-Adams uh, as well. I think Wisconsin... It might not start this way. I think Wisconsin's going to be run first. Whether it kills Phil Longo inside or not, I think, I think they are. I think this is going to be a strong run game. The running back room is really deep at Wisconsin. It is. I think Taylor Walker is going to be RB1 fairly quickly. I think Chesma Lucy is going to be more agile change of pace 
type of back as well, but they provide a nice thunder and lightning combination. I like the offensive line. I do like the receivers on the outside, but I think they're going to run to set up some of those matchups in the throw game down the field. I think they maybe want to limit Tyler Van Dyke and how often he exactly is slinging the football down the field to avoid some of those turnovers as well. Let's go to the front nine, so to speak. And boy, when you talk about offense in the Big Ten, you got to talk about the Oregon Ducks at the top. I think there's no question that they are the number one offense right now uh, in the Big Ten Conference. But before I get to the top, let's kind of start at the bottom and count up. You know, when you look at some of the players that Michigan has coming back, like they still got Donovan Edwards back. They still got Colston Loveland back. When you look at the running back position, and when you look at the tight end position nationwide, like th those are two of the best at their respective positions. So I think you got to give them the benefit of the doubt over there. We know they have some questions at quarterback. Look, I know they lose pretty much all their offensive line, but they they have good players. They have good players that have been able to get time during these blowouts. So they've seen time and they're four star type of recruits. They're solid players. They've brought in some transfers as well. So this is still a good Michigan offensive line. Is it great? Is it elite? I don't know if I put it in that category just yet, but of course the questions at quarterback, of course the questions at quarterback. So if they can figure things out or maybe just take less of a responsibility on the quarterback, I think this offense will be just fine. Uh, you know, I love Indiana. I, I love their receiver room right now. I think it could be very explosive. Kurt Signetti is known for some high-flying offenses as well. Curtis Rourke, I know he was banged up at Ohio, but when he was healthy, he could really push the ball down the field. I think everything that they have right now is a great combination. I look at Indiana, I look at Maryland. Those are teams right now where their offensive line is so imperative to the success of their offense because – Maryland has a ton of transfers on their offensive line. Indiana has some uncertainties, especially with an injury they had. Trey Wedig, I believe, uh, from the transfer from Wisconsin is out for the season. So if they can't protect and these quarterbacks are running around, ask Purdue what happens when, when you got that. You know, it, it doesn't work out for you. So they have to have their offensive line at the very least to be able to be average. But Indiana's got weapons. I look up to Maryland. Of course, they got to get their quarterback situation figured out. But Ty Felton, Caden Prather, Octavian Smith on the outside, Roman Hemby, I think, is a good running back as well. And I just trust Mike Loxley to go out there and scheme up a really good offense. I trust him to make uh, good decisions. I think he's a really underrated offensive mind in college football. Okay, now we get into the West Coast teams. I got Washington and UCLA. I think they're pretty comparable. I think UCLA probably has the edge in their wide receiver group. I think they're comparable at running back, even though I'd probably give the one 2 tandem at Washington a slight edge. But TJ Harden is still pretty darn good back there. I think he's going to be a good Big Ten running back. I'll give Will Rogers a slight ed over, edge over Garbers just because he's played longer. I think the thing with Rogers is he's adjusting schemes, I think, pretty big. Of course, you got that air raid system with Mike Leach over at Mississippi State. He had success. I think that really fit his skill set. Now, this offense coming over from Arizona is more decision-based, so he's got to be able to process things. We'll see if he's able to do that uh, as compared to that if-then system that is the air raid offense as well. Now, I've got Penn State above them because I think Penn State's better on the offensive line than those two teams. They're better in the run game, of course, with that dynamic tandem with Singleton and Allen. You know, as for as much flack as Drew Aller takes, I think when it comes to a talent perspective and then... Andy Nicky coming in with this offense. I think Drew Aller is going to really benefit from that. And hey, he takes care of the football. That fresh, his freshman numbers were pretty good. They, well, he wasn't a freshman, but a first-year starter. You get the general idea um, over there. Um, you know, I know their receivers. They are not at the same level as maybe a UCLA or a Washington. But I think as a whole, this Penn State offense kind of notches up a, a little bit higher as well. I've got Ohio State above a USC right now. I just think that's a, that's maybe the best run game in college football uh, right now. I don't believe a ton in USC's run game. I think it's going to be – I think it's going to provide a little bit of balance. I don't think it's going to be a 50-50 offense over there uh, at USC. But Ohio State, I think, still has a better wide receiver room. They have a better offensive line. You know, they, they have better running backs. I just think Ohio State is just, just a tick above. USC – could work their way up possibly to that number two spot. And of course, I said it before, the Oregon Ducks. You got to have the Oregon Ducks 
as the number one team right now. There's just there's weapons all over the damn place. They got the best offensive line in the Big Ten Conference right now. All right, let's look at it. Final power rankings on the offensive side of the football here. Preseason in the Big Ten Conference. I don't think it's as deep as the defensive side of the ball. I think there's some offenses down there that could surprise. Nebraska could surprise and be a lot better if Dylan is really good. If Aiden Childs is good at Michigan State, I think they could possibly surprise uh, as well. You know, who knows what's going on with Wisconsin? I mentioned good versus bad t- TVD. That's going to determine a lot where the Badgers go this season as well. So it's going to be a fun year, certainly, on the offensive side of the ball in the Big Ten. A lot of mystery, but I'm sure a lot of questions will be answered as well. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.